This video chart presentation of EasyLink Solutions Corp. brought to you by AllPennyStocks.com. EasyLinks is a pink sheet listed stock trading on our ticker ESYL. This chart was put on a stocks to watch for this week. See holding a nice support level at 30 cents. Came out yesterday up 12.12%. 330,000 shares traded. Definitely not a bad amount of volume for this stock. Classic kind of bottom play fashion. MACD trending back towards zero, telling us a bullish cross could be coming. Always looking for these sort of plays to bounce first and then a possible reversal. Longer term trend line, you look to be broken if it's going to try and make a true reversal. But right now, the idea is to look for it to hold that support, make the bounce. MACD giving hints that may happen. PPO is very similar. The ADX in a pretty nice reversal position with a negative DI up on top, positive DI on the bottom. Some people out there will call it a pinch. I won't ever call it a pinch at this level. It's just not deep enough. And the ADX is cutting in between the two DIs. But still, it's a good position for potential reversal. See with a little bit of buying pressure that's been coming in. 7 MFI starting to move pretty quickly. Accumulation distribution making the hook, showing some buying pressure over the last few days. Getting the slightest bit of uptrend going on with shaking money flow. Of course, you always want to see it up in the green to show buying pressure is dominant, but this isn't too far away from zero. It's starting to look like it's going to trend back towards it a little bit. I always like to see the CCI trending upward off the bottom. You can see, of course, we made a sharp move through here. But even more importantly to me, it's making a little bit of an uptrend right now, and that's something I like to see. Full stove, of course, is bottomed out. It's an oversold territory. The stock obviously fell pretty hard. Still very early on, the full stove can trend in oversold territory for a long period of time. But it has dropped a little bullish cross, and that can be the earliest of good signs. Show some momentum is coming into the play. Tricks, of course, is lagging. You're just not going to get anything out of this. One thing you look for in something like this is much like the MACD. On a longer term component, if it can make a turn, try and break through this downward spiral it's been in. But at this point, you're just not going to get much from the tricks. RSI is all in good position. Seven still has room to go before it cuts through the 14 and 21. Coming out of oversold, looking like they're all trying to turn up. For a bottom play, nice positioning for the RSIs. What I look for in this sort of thing, it does get a bottom support down here at 27. This is probably 29 right there. But I look for 30 to hold. Dating back in through here, you can see it was a little bit of support resistance level, and it held it as support over the last few days. So I want to see that 30 mark hold because if it falls through that 30 and closes below it, there's not a great deal of support in sight for this stock. Might pick up a little bit right there around 20, but even at that point, or down to 18, it's a pretty significant fall from where it is with this closing at 37 cents. So point being, there's just not a lot of support there. It needs to hold 30 cents. Not to mention continuing the rotation of these indicators, trying to put together a bounce. From a resistance standpoint, if you go back historically, there certainly is a little bit right there in the 39 40 cent area. And that's going to run right up to around here, around 41 42. But I'd expect it to really start picking up if it gets a little bit higher range in the 40s, up here around 48. You see how right there is the 200 day moving average is. Always a key component to try and get above that long term indicator. And from a price per share standpoint, I would expect it to stiffen up right in that area. Now, again, we're talking about a stock that moves with quite a bit of volatility. So to climb up to that level from 37 is still a pretty nice climb. So from a technical standpoint, it has a better upside than it does downside, which is something that you always look for. That's why you harp on this 30 for holding, and you look to see how it reacts if it goes up here to this 48, 49 cent mark. And if it's going to make it through it or not, pay attention to volume. Of course, the greater the volume, if it can blow through that, the stronger the likelihood is that it might go up, pull back, make the higher low, and then try and over the course of a little bit of time recover some of these losses that came from up when it fell around $1.60 all the way down to these levels. As always, just a technical look at this play. I don't have any idea fundamentally what went on that caused this fall, but those are the first two key areas from a support and resistance standpoint regarding the ESYL chart. Now beyond that, you're getting into the area of true doubles and such before you start hitting some more resistance up around $0.70. Cents. Not something that I look for instantaneously. We just always try and identify plays that look like they might find a bottom, might potentially try and make a climb. And heading into this week, EasyLink certainly has that look, and it's kicked the week off right by closing up 12%. So we'll keep it on the watch list and see how it performs for the rest of this week. As always, this is merely my interpretation of the ESYL chart. I'm not a financial consultant and strongly encourage you to do your own proper due diligence, consult with a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Please visit the AllPennyStocks.com website to view the full disclaimer disclosure and do not base any investment decisions upon any material found on the website and or video chart. No person employed by AllPennyStocks is a registered investment advisor or licensed broker-dealer. Thank you for watching and trade smart.